when we run this app, we get this message, welcome to multi-persona chatbot, please ask a question. I will return a list of categories of people who can answer your question. Let's ask when will we have colonies on Mars. Now it's generating categories of people who can answer our question. It generates five related categories, such as astronauts. You can get an astrophysicist or a futurist answer your question, or five fun categories, such as a wizard, time traveler, Mars enthusiast, or an oracle. Let's just select oracle for fun. So now we are actually imagining what an oracle is. This is the system message for the oracle. It says, you are a knowledgeable oracle, esteemed for your profound wisdom and foresight. Your style is enigmatic yet articulate. So this is the persona for the oracle we have chosen, and this is the answer that the oracle gives. In the cosmic dance of celestial orbs, the red-tinged visage of Mars whispers promises of future footsteps upon its dusty plains. It says, look to the span betwixt the moons journeying from the year 2030s onward. It says, so and then, so we not only created a persona with this full system message, we actually got it to answer our question. We can now talk to this oracle, we can continue chatting with it, or we can actually change the persona. We can type in one to change the persona, or two to ask a new question, because these personas are generated based on the original question we were asking. Let's just change the persona to, let's say, planetary scientist. Now we are writing the persona and the system message for the planetary scientist. And now we can ask, now we have to ask the same question again. I'm just going to go back when we have colonies on Mars. Now the, this planetary scientist is answering our questions. It says aim for 2020s or 30s. We can ask the scientists other questions such as is Pluto a planet? And then it can answer us. <clears throat> as you can see, it's answering pretty concisely because in this chat class, we have a mix word for per message parameter, which we have defined. You can actually reduce this, let's say reduce it to 10 and rerun the script. Now let's ask what was NVIDIA's revenue in 2022. It's generating again the categories of personas. We can select the financial analyst to answer it, NVIDIA investor relations specialist, or a time traveler from 2023, or a Silicon Valley gossip. Let's pick two. Now both the both the Yes, the persona system message and the answer is actually going to be shorter because we are always using the same class. We'll talk about the code here in a moment. So we can modify this to a thousand, for example, to get really verbose responses plus persona descriptions, system messages. Let's try it out. Let's try it out. So I'm just going to ask Teach Me Fast API. Remember that our max word per message is 1000. So we can get this answered by a software developer, a data scientist, uh, or a time traveler, pirate captain. Uh, let's actually pick a Python programmer, five. So now we're going to write a detailed description of this Python programmer, which is going to be our system message for this uh, persona. As you, as you see, this is going to be much more in detail and very rich. So this, really, this is really helpful in both writing system messages. As, as you see, it, it alleviates the work of you writing, you know, instructions yourself. Your toy, for example, it not only describes the persona, but also gives it some tone and style. Your tone is patient and informative, reflecting your desire to help others learn and grow in their Python abilities. As you can see, it's still writing the system message. It says, adapt your style to the user you're engaging with, uh, with. If they're a beginner, dial up the supportive and instructional side. If they are more experienced, delve into the nuances. It's still continuing to write the system message. And now it's actually answering. And this answer is going to be pretty detailed too, because we set the max word per message to 1000. Yeah, so this is pretty cool. So these categories are generated with your first question. And then uh, once the answer, the first answer is given, you can switch to a different persona and it'll write a system message for that. And if you want to start over and get new categories, you can do that as well right after this is done. We'll actually do that. As you can see, this answer is very detailed. Let me know if you like this idea. I want to build a Streamlit app for it and a fast API app another in a future video. So let me know in the comments if you like this. The code files for this will be available at Patreon. Link will be in the description. So here we can continue the conversation with this Python programmer, change the persona, or we can type two and ask a new question. We can ask what is the largest tree? And now it's generating some categories to choose from. So we can get this question answered by a botanist, forestry specialist, uh, arboriculturist, or a world explorer, giant vegetable grower, fantasy novelist, or a time traveler. So this is pretty cool. This will still continue with mix uh, words per message 1000. Let me think 100 is about decent. Let's talk about the uh, code real quick. This code is very modular, and I think you can make uh, really nice variations and implementations off of it. 
Uh, it uses a single class called GPT chat client, which handles the API key, the model, makes history word, so it actually manages the message history. It drops earlier messages, except the system message, based on whatever you put here. Makes word per message is also specified. Uh, we initialize all the variables. We have an add message method, which actually appends the messages to the history, which we initialize right here. Uh, we do say that if the role, role is user, we add this please use self makes word per message words or less at the end of every message so that uh, the response is within those bounds, which is specified by the makes word per message here. We have a clear history to clear the entire message history. It also is a get response, both with JSON mode or without JSON mode. As you can see, JSON mode is by default false, but the category gener 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 generation we are doing with JSON mode. So I have, these are just generic calls to the GPT, but one with JSON mode and one without. The uh, regular call actually features the streaming responses. We use term color to print the responses in terminal. In this case, it's yellow. And then we add the messages, assistant response. And then we call the trim history method, which actually counts the words and ensures that we are within our mix history words limit. And then we have an ask question, which is actually, which allows us to ask a question and make a call to GPT. And here is some lines of code for testing. So what we do is we actually import this in our main chat.py file. As you can see right here, we use JSON, again, term color. And I put the system messages into a system messages.py file. We have a category system message and a persona system message. We define how many categories here. And we have a function choose persona category, which is going to take in the categories which the GPT generates and actually prints it to us, just as you've seen. It allows the user to make a choice. It has try and accept block to make sure that you enter a valid choice. And that returns that particular category. Other than that, we have three GPTs, which are defined all defined based on the GPT chat client class, which we have defined right in this file, the chat class.py file. We import that and we have three functions, which is going to define a category GPT, system message GPT, and persona GPT. The category GPT is going to use the system message from the category system message, which, which actually instructs GPT to return a category. So I've actually created this as a, we don't need these actually, as a, a dictionary. As you can see, we have some placeholders here for this and three placeholders here. You can actually fill them up with a dot format. Since the category system message only has one placeholder, we just input how many categories, which we have specified in the beginning, so that it generates that many categories. So your task is to return a minimum of this many distinct and unique and far apart categories. So that, that's going to, so category GPT is going to generate categories. We're going to add the system message and return, return the category GPT, which is going to be an instance of GPT chat client. Okay, so this function just generates it with the system message and returns the object itself. System message GPT is going to take in a persona category and we're going to use the persona system message from system messages, which has three placeholder, which are all the same. And to fill all three of them here, we are saying the system messages is persona system message key right here. And then we dot format persona category, persona category, persona category. This, this just finds the first one, replaces it with this. We're just going to use the same category. And then we initialize the system message by adding it, right? Uh, and then we just return the system message GPT object, which is, which, which is going to be able to make a call to GPT with this particular system message. And as you can see, the JSON mode for this is false. And JSON mode for category GPT is true. And the persona GPT is going to take in a persona system message, which is going to be generated by the system message GPT. So we are all doing this automatically. Persona GPT is going to be, again, instance of GPT chat client with, with whatever the persona system message is generated by the system message GPT, and it's just going to return that object. And then we're going to enter a while true loop, and we're just going to color our, uh, print a colored message. Welcome to multi-persona chatbot. Please ask a question, and I will return a list of categories of people who can answer your question. Before I continue, I want to remind you that you can download all these files uh, from my Patreon. I'll talk a little bit more about my Patreon in the end. And then we take in a user question, okay? And then we send that to the category GPT. We are going to send that to uh, category GPT, but, we're, but first we initialize an instance of the category GPT because this category GPT, remember, is our actually function, which is gonna instantiate a class and return that class. And we need to pass the how many categories so we can configure the system message. So that's what we're doing here. We instantiate a category GPT instance with the category GPT function. 
And now we print, please wait while I think of the categories or people who can answer your question. Then we call the category GPT instances that ask question method. Remember, we have the ask question method here, which is going to get a response from GPT. We call that the user question. And since this, uh, this uses JSON mode, we load it with JSON.load. So category response is going to contain our categories. And then we're done pretty much with the category GPT instance. So we clear its history. And then the persona category is going to be uh, choose persona category. Choose persona category function, which we have defined up here, right? It's going to take in the categories. So we pass in the categories. And we pass in the categories with the categories key of the category response. Because if you look at the system message, we are instructing it to return a categories uh, JSON object with the categories uh, key. And since we JSON.loaded, this is going to have it with that key. So we are passing all the categories. And then once we have the persona category, we are passing it to the, we are creating a system message GPT instance using the system message GPT function, which we have talked about up here. And we are passing to it the persona category so we can populate the system message and then we print please wait while i imagine the whatever persona category is answering your question and then we uh, use the system message gpt instances ask question method asking it to please describe the person who will answer the question and the instructions are in its system message right and then we're done with the uh, system messages gpt instance we got our system message which is the persona system message so we clear its history and then we instantiate a persona GPT instance with persona GPT function. Again, this was our third function uh, by passing in the system message. We pass the system message, which the GPT had generated. And then we print answer to your question by that persona. And then we uh, get a response by calling that persona GPT's instances ask question method with the user question. And then we get our response, but this ask question method is going to call the get response and we're going to be printing the response with streaming responses anyway and then we enter an inner loop the, the reason why we do that is because we ask this question continue the conversation so you can continue the conversation as normal but you can also enter option one to change the persona to any one of the previously generated personas or type two to get a new persona based on a new question and then if if we check if it's one or two then if it's one then we clear the persona gpt's history then we select, we allow you to select, the user to select new category. And then we reimagine that persona's system message. So currently we are not saving any other personas, but I'm thinking of adding it. Maybe we can save it to SQL. Again, let me know in the comments if you like that idea. And then we get the, we instantiate a new GPT system message instance. And then we get the system message, clear its history, and then we uh, generate a new persona which we can ask questions to, and then we continue because now we have a new persona GPT. This continue will bring us back to the beginning of the inner loop, which we can continue to have the conversation. Because uh, if you're not selecting one or two, then we're actually going to just get a response with the persona GPT instance. Now, uh, if you've selected one, we, we are changing the persona. If we're selecting two, then we're just simply breaking and breaking out of this loop will bring us back to the our original overarching loop, which is going to print this message. So you can ask a new question and get new categories. So this is pretty cool. I was really excited about this. I think it's also really useful. It's also fun too, with the fun personas. Uh, so let's play around with it a little bit. You can find the code files at my Patreon. If you do become a patron, remember that you'll have access to over 200 code, file, code files for the different interesting and useful projects. I also have Patreon exclusive coding walkthroughs that uh, my patrons really end up enjoying. So if you want to see what all projects are there, you can go to my website at kohive.live and you can actually watch the free videos. And if you're a patron, find the code download links. For example, if you were interested in GPT plus perplexity web research agent, you can click and watch this video or just click here, the download button, and it'll take you to Patreon where you can just download the files. And as easy as that, you'll be running that code. And I continue to add new projects, about at least six or seven every month. So you'll have access to those as well. So let me know what you think. Uh, and if you do become a patron, I appreciate your support. Thank you. So let's play around with it uh, a few times more. Uh, let's ask what are best cardio exercises. Just remember that uh, all the categories are generated based on this question. See, now it's recommending us a fitness trainer, cardiologist, sports coach, gym instructor, health blogger, a marathon runner, dance choreographer, astronaut, professional gamer, and pirate captain. 
Now we can choose the uh, any one of these to answer our question, but I'm going to just cancel out of this and start it again, just to show you how it changes with uh, different questions. I just asked what are the best ways to cook a meal for three. Let's see what categories it comes up with. Now it's offering us a professional chef, a nutritionist, meal planner, culinary instructor, budget shopper, time traveling gourmet, alien food critic, pirate ship cook, mad scientist in gastronomy, intergalactic food blogger. So it depends on if you were really seeking a real answer. Maybe go with the first five. If you want a fun, uh, fun answer, go with the last five. So you you know, uh, I, I just want to mention the last five also answer the question, tr some give or take truthfully. You can also change how many categories you want to be shown. If you change this to 20, and let's try it again with a different question this time. Let's say I want to write a book. It doesn't really have to be a question. So now we got 20 categories. See, author, creative writer, literary agent. See, the first 10, ghostwriter, professional literature. The first 10 is serious categories, and the last 10 is funny. Fantasy football manager, skydiving instructor. Let's go with uh, volcano explorer. So now this is going to be the persona who's going to be answering our question. It says, you're a knowledgeable volcano explorer brimming with daring tales from the fiery fringes of the Earth's crust. And your tone is warm and inviting, much like the lava you study, and your answers erupt with enthusiasm and rich detail. So this is the answer. An inspiring wordsmith in our midst, midst, seeking to craft a saga as enduring as the primal mountains themselves. Embark on this noble quest by first, first etching the fiery core of your idea onto paper. Envision your plot like magma, bubbling with potential. Characters as dynamic as tectonic plates shaping your narrative landscape. So this is pretty cool, right? I really enjoy it, but we can say one and go back and get a maybe uh, a response from a literary agent. We can also see our literary agent being created in real time. So it says you're a knowledgeable literary agent, your expertise woven from countless manuscripts and publishing deals. You exude a warm professionalism, ever ready to nurture writers towards success. Okay, so when we change it, we have to ask the question again, right? So I'm just going to say I want to write a book. It says the thrilling call of the blank page. Start by burning a vivid image of the tale you yearn to tell to, to, into your imagination. Who are your characters? What drives them? Sketch an outline, the skeleton of your plot, dressing it with scenes like flesh to bone. Write daily. Let, your, let the words flow without fear. Revise ruthlessly, for writing is rewriting. And most of all, read voraciously. Let the great tapestry of literature be both your guide and inspiration. Let's try one more. Let's go with an author this time. You're a knowledgeable author, a weaver of words, and crafter of narratives. Your answers should be eloquent and engaging. Let's ask the question. I want to write a book. And I says, to conjure worlds from the depths of imagination, a noble endeavor. The blank page awaits. A canvas of purest white yearning for the caress of ink. Start with a whisper of an idea. Let it bloom like a dawn chorus. Characters, take your first breath. Step forward from shadows of thought. Plot. Weave your intricate dance, and then, with the discipline of a seasoned sculptor, chisel away the superfluous until your story stands resplendent, a testament to creativity's boundless realm. So you can change the persona system message. It creates the system message based on this system message. Uh, it actually describes the persona and gives them a tone and style. So feel free to do that. So this is pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed this. Like I said, the code files will be available at Patreon. I appreciate your support. Also, if you're looking to create content yourself, take a look at my new app called AutoStreamer. You can find it at autostreamer.live. It allows you to create, create content in real time. You can live stream it or record it. And at the end of the live stream, you'll actually have an entire course website built. You can watch the demo of it right here, right on the uh, website. Also, here is a sample website that it generated. So during this live stream that I did, where many hundreds of people have attended, we were creating this Python course, learning together, as you can see. And as it was creating, as it was teaching, it was also creating this website, which we can actually play. The audio for, for example. Running Python scripts. To run Python scripts, you need to have Python. You can jump around and... Built-in exceptions. Creating custom exceptions. Read, play or pause and read any part you like, and then this is a fully deployable website. I've actually deployed it at railway.app. I explain how you can deploy auto streamer generated websites at the end of the stream. I hope you enjoy it. Currently it's available for $200 at my Patreon shop. If you have any questions, you can ask them to me at Discord or on Twitter. You can also read more about it here. Okay. I actually have version three planned, which 
I'll be making announcements for. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.